you know, with, with, uh, with, with two other people <laughs> and kind of went that direction. Yeah. And so that's, that's the, that's kind of, I'm, I'm kind of putting myself out there right now. Right. I have some VAs. Okay. But they're, they're doing some more internal stuff and not the closing side of my business. And I think that's kind of where I'm at right now with, I, I am stumping my own growth. I am yeah. preventing yeah. my, my business from yeah. closing more deals yeah. because of that. Yeah. And that's, well, that's just a hurdle that I'm trying to deal with right now. It's really crazy. Yeah. I'm recording this because I want to share it in the VIP room, guys, uh, mm -hmm. like I normally do for the folks that couldn't be here uh, from the VIP. Uh, so that's if you saw me hit the record button. If it, I don't know if it lets you guys know if it flashes or whatever, but that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did. I, I think a, a part of what you're talking about is the need to outsource. Uh, but then again, another part that I hear and tell me if I'm wrong, Rick, I mean, it's your business. So I, I'm just kind of an ignorant outsider, but, um, it sounds like you could tighten the screws down a little bit on your sales process. Um, uh, and what I mean is, is I had another student today that I was doing a one-on-one -on -one call with that had a similar issue. And she said, well, I sent out four, uh, three memos today. And I got a, I got a follow-up call with one of them on Friday and the others I have not, um, I don't know when I'm going to talk to them. Okay. <clears throat> to me, that's a big problem. <laughs> um, I, I don't, you know, I can't say I'll never talk to a homeowner and then have them put me off till Friday today being Wednesday. Uh, if it was Tuesday or Monday, it, it's even worse. Um, you know, the farther out, you know, I, I will stop a guy at the end of the conversation when he's trying to put me off to Friday and he'll say, and I'll say, you know, Friday, I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry to do something. Have I said something that made you feel uncomfortable? Or are you just trying to be polite and tell me no? Cause I'd rather you just say that so I can go on. Uh, you know, I really want to get to the nut cut really with this guy. What is the story? <laughs> Is he just messing with me? And then I'll go as far as saying, hey, you know, tonight I'll send you the, I'll send you the, the memo. I'll send you the agreement. No problem. And tonight at 930, you pick your time. I, I will call to follow up. And so I set, a, I set an appointment like right away, right away before I get off the phone. That way I can keep all of today's business in today. That's what I like to do. <laughs> Yeah. I don't like all these loose strings. It honestly gives me anxiety. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. You know, I and, do. and the longer my to-do list gets, and that will make your to-do list stack up quick. You got all the, you know, I don't want that. Like Claude says, uh, he's one of my mentors, but he says, um, I'm in the business to make money when today. So, if we can do something today, great. If not, then that lead will go into a bucket and I will judge it one through 10, how I should respond later. But I'll get to that later when I'm bored because I would rather go talk to somebody that's willing to do something right away today. Kind of like that low hanging fruit concept that I talk about a lot. So I, in her, in her, uh, the other student that I was talking about in her situation, it's more like she is needing to be better at strengthening that, that sales process and that closing and getting that second appointment right up against the back of that first one. And instead of letting these, you know, letting them kind of run around the yard and then they escape through the fence and they're gone. You know, right. I don't know if that's happening to you, Rick, but it kind of sounded like it. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no, I mean, that's just it. I, you know, I, I guess, I guess it's, it, it's a growing pain, right? Because as you start to generate more business, um, you get to a point where you can only do so much and then things start slipping. And yeah. then, you know, you, you, you're either going one direction or the other. And, you know, you have to kind of adapt and overcome and change and, and just grow with it. And that's, I think that's, that's where I'm kind of, yeah. getting snagged up a little bit. Like I, I just need to jump over the fence. Right. I, I, I need yeah. a closer. It's what I need. Well, I mean, okay. okay. So if you have leads, <clears throat> then all you have to do is find you that right person. I mean, it's not that 
the easiest thing to do to find that guy or gal that can make phone calls, but it is, there are a lot of talented people out there. Um, so, I mean, you can, you can hire them like a real job even Rick and right. bring them a commission based on what they can accomplish for you as far as productivity goes. But, uh, you know, th so there's a lot of ways to go about doing it. I don't like the idea of overseas VAs making my phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> so and you probably would yeah. say what <clears throat> yeah no no i mean uh especially on the closing side of it you know the, yeah. you're on the you're on the downhill to wrap up you yeah. know the paperwork or you know or, or you know and that side of it <clears throat> okay well yeah, who's I, having, I, I guess what i need to understand is who's having that conversation that i was just talking about where where you've gone through it you <clears throat> solve the issues and you're going to send out an agreement who's having that in your mind and when you're picturing your <clears throat> business model the way you want it are you making that call is somebody else making that call or how how do you see it right now <clears throat> i i am making that call okay so it's uh it could be it could be me replying to a, a text message you know or whatever the case may be and then having that initial conversation that kind of really is going to lay out the foundation of the direction of the deal, you know, if there is even a deal <clears throat> and, yeah. and that, that is kind of where, you know, half the time I'm able to, to put it all together. And then the other half, it slips through the cracks and not, not that this whole <clears throat> meeting that you're having tonight is turning into, you know, me sharing my failures, right? But it is a growing pain, and yeah. you know, I just, yeah. I just wanted to talk to you about that and see if anybody else is going through that, and and you know, if if they just jumped over the fence and brought a person on, or you know, kind of where they were at, and you know, just getting some extra thoughts and opinions about yeah. that scenario, because I I just personally feel like I am causing myself, my business, to lose potential deals because of that. You know, like you mentioned before, things kind of get scattered out and, you know, after a while, yeah, like, yeah. follow up time being made. Yeah. Hey, as far as the failure comment goes, man, I don't think any of us were thinking about that. Um, I, I, honestly, you know, th this is what this room is for. And we really, we really do try to be as real as we can be. Um, that's the only advice I have for you really is to just jump and do it. Um, you know, you're going to have to, I will warn you though. I mean, I, I've done it numerous times and you will have to spend a considerable amount of time working with that individual to get it to where you want it to be. <laughs> and when I say right. considerable amount of time, I mean, you have to have somebody that's, that's willing, that's good, that has some raw talent. And then they're also willing to work for you and make it happen. And so it'll, you might have to go through a couple before you find the right one or maybe even more than a couple. <clears throat> I've tried many of them, Rick, many, many. <laughs> yeah. It's tough <clears throat> business when you're trying to get somebody that's a closer. See, and the problem is, man, is you got to pay them like that. You know, you got to pay them like they're a closer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And, 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 and I don't like <clears throat> to do that. I don't want to pay a closer. I do pay a closer. When <clears throat> I first got in into the concept of outsourcing my business, I thought, well, what I want to do is, is I want to outsource 100% of this and have everything done where I'm sitting on the beach with a uh, margarita or something and, you know, just enjoying my life. And I get text message updates. Well, that, that, that was a good dream. Uh, <laughs> I have never accomplished that yet. And uh, I do have a lot of my business outsourced. But I guarantee you, I work every single day, man. And I've gone through a lot of different phone callers. I've gone, gone through a lot of different other types of VAs as well. And the way that I've discovered that it works best for me is to have my routine work being done by virtual assistants. And then I have uh, acquisitions team members and acquisitions managers. Those are the two titles that I give them. And... I thought originally that I would be able to do this with VAs paying them five bucks an hour and I would still have a 80% margin of the deal. You know what I mean? 
uh, reality is that after I outsource all of my deals, uh, all the acquisitions, all of that on the teams that I have that do that, I'm probably bringing in about 25% to me. <clears throat> is that whack? It's better than 0%, and that's what you get when you lose the deal. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about failures. I don't know if that's a failure or not, Rick. I mean, I get to do what I want when I want, man. I'm happy. You know, exactly. Buy the exactly. Toys and play around, and I get to have fun, and you know, I get to play with the wife, and uh, you know, go out in the yard and toss it around with the kids, or or whatever I want, whenever I want. So it's great, but it was a long adjustment for me because I want. I was like, this is my business. I'm. I've never pay out that much money. Oh, but you know, in time, I kind of learned that I'll do more business if I give more money and pay people, get more of the deal, pay, pay people well, they'll be happy, they don't feel slighted, they'll stay longer, I'll eventually, I'll make more money. Uh, but it's kind right. of like a mental shift because I was a cheapskate. <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah, no, I appreciate you chatting about it because again, that's just kind of, you know, I just wanted to share with, with you and, and the group <laughs> kind of where, where I'm at and, you know, some of, the, some of the different pains that you go through. It's real, man, it really is. So, well, do you feel like a cheapskate? <clears throat> I mean, it's well, like, I, it's like uh, you, hey, Justin, you know, I think I got that analysis by paralysis. You hate the you <laughs> hate spending that money. Rick hates spending <clears throat> that money. I hate spending that money too, brother. That's all I'm trying to tell you. And I've been there. Yeah, but it's yeah, funny. I mean, if you want to go to a life of freedom, you ain't got no choice. <clears throat> well, that's just it. By by not spending it, uh, mm -hmm. I end up losing it. You know, because uh, I lost deals. I mean, yeah, that, that's just yeah. It. You do more deals, you'll do more volume and all that stuff. Mm. Uh, you'll also have more. You know, you'll have more uh, of this. You'll have to do and and oh, you know, uh, and 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 how did it go today? And you know, you'll have that kind of shit too. You know, <laughs> right, right. But that's okay. You know, hey, somebody's got to be the fucking boss. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. Uh, and, <clears throat> Ed over here, he's telling me he's got analysis paralysis. Man, what's up with that? <laughs> Watching too many videos. Oh, you, you know, it seemed like it seemed like I want to get all the information before I get out there. What information are you missing, brother? I bet I'm missing throw, none. I it's just I that the real estate licensing exam at your ass right now, and you pass five percent <laughs> of it. It seems like I got to have all the answers and stuff. Like I, you know, like you say, you don't need all the answers. You just need to talk to people. You know what I come out with today? I realized today, man, is I think it's not about what you're going to make. It's about who you can help. If you go with the attitude that you're going to try to solve a problem for somebody, I think it's a lot more easy, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. You got you to gotta get out there and help people. Is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah. I agree, man. Totally, 100%. You know, because uh, most of the time when I first started this, I was like, man, I'm going to go out there and see how much money I can make. I want, you know, it don't matter. I'm going to try to make money. I'm not even worried about a solution. Yeah. I think, for me at least, and maybe you're not like me. I, I don't know, but for me at least. No, I'm dark. You white. I, I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that just means you're more, uh, more moist and lovable, man, I guess. I <laughs> Uh, okay, so for me, at least, if I have a, a, a goal of building a real estate business or if I have a big, big goal of uh, making a lot of money, so whatever it may be, if, if, I'm, if I'm not chunking that down into small, manageable bites, I choke on it. Uh, and, and what I mean is, is I have to basically break it down into little things like my next deal. And so when you break it down into your next deal, you look at it like this. Well, that's, that's 10, 15 leads, maybe 20, maybe 25 if I'm having a shit month. Okay. Um, 25 leads. And I know that's probably going to take me, if I spend an hour a day, it's probably going to take me a week and a half, maybe tops to get through this. So I think I can commit to that. 
So then that's how I commit to the activity. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I break it down from what I want to accomplish into bite-sized chunks. And then I'm like, okay, well, what is the, what, what is the equating activity? And the equating activity typically isn't all that much. And so then I just make a commitment to do that for that specific amount of time every day. So for example, if I set an hour a day that I'm going to make phone calls, I know that I can survive an hour. Okay. <laughs> no matter what I can survive an hour, no matter how good it is, no matter how bad it is at the end of an hour, I will still be alive. I know that to be true. And I think I know. And, and then, and then the second thought that I have is, is <clears throat> I've done this before. And I know that at the end of the hour, how good I feel for just having done my work. And I know as men, and we're all men here tonight. And you know what's what's funny is Rick was talking about my hair uh, being so glorious or beautiful, whatever he said it was. And uh, the funny thing is, is on my YouTube analytics, it says I have 0% female viewers. <laughs> <laughs> wow sex symbol right here guys sex symbol <laughs> not one <laughs> there might be there might be a few but it's it's predominantly the men one, and, and, and i don't mind that as as men though i think we all can kind of relate to the idea that when we were kids work was maybe something we dreaded but as a man you kind of develop a sense of going to work and the fulfillment of having worked hard just for the work's sake. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the best way I know how to put it is there's a, a joy and a pride that comes at the end of just doing the activity without connection to any result. There's a pride in just knowing that you did the work that a man would do. And I don't know. I mean, I kind of like, have translated that into phoning. <laughs> so I know that regardless of the outcome, I've spent an hour today. I, I should take pride in that. And I do, I feel a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment just by having fulfilled the activity, knowing, having a faith, let's say rather a faith that the continuous regular habitual activity will eventually lead me to my goal. <laughs> Y'all sleep out there? No, I hear hey, everybody. It's Tony Robbins. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. <laughs> How do y'all do that? Y'all tell me what motivates you. Okay. I, I was thinking about that. Uh, yesterday somebody asked me the question i think i even made a video on it how do you fix your motivation problem yeah well i got to thinking the answer is simple don't you want to eat <laughs> don't you want your kids to have clothes okay well if you if you're comfortable though and you got another income that might not be the case and maybe that's an issue you're just so comfortable are you just so comfortable ed you don't need to no did you you see, I'm already behind. I need to. Okay. So, do you believe that you can, though? The thing about it, Justin, I get out, I make the, the right. I do, I, I, I do the, I do everything but talk. You know, I, I, I send out the text messages. I get replies back. I got numbers written down. I need the people. I need to call. I even just drew by numbers, drew by places, and got numbers. Yeah. But I haven't made the call yet. All right. Because All right. I feel like I get on the call when somebody asks me a question, then I'm stuck. But I'm, you know, like the lady called me today when I talked to her. She called me. I didn't. She called me out of the blue because I told her I was gonna call her. And then I, I started asking her uh, how long she's been in the property, how long it's been vacant, and she told me it needed a little work and stuff like that. You know, and, and then <clears throat> I started asking her a few questions. And that's when I realized maybe I, I'm going at it wrong because I should be concentrating on helping the solution. Not trying to see what I can get out of. It. Yeah, that's what, that's a great way to look at it. That's a great way to look at it. Ed. Um, you know, uh, I, I think you need a. Here's what you need. You need an anger ally. 
<laughs> what is that? Uh, it, it's like uh, it's like when you go to any twelve step program, they they assign you a an alcoholic buddy. <laughs> oh, I never been one. You know what I'm saying? I heard of it, but I never been to one. Oh, I've never been to one neither. <clears throat> I'm not saying it's bad if people have been, but uh, in, in every twelve step program that I that I'm aware of, that I I think I know is that they assign you a, uh, they, they get you hooked up with somebody that can help you. That's what I'm saying. A support buddy. Yeah, so you get a, you get, you get an accountability partner. Exactly, man. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, I said <laughs> you know, anger maybe ally. That's, maybe, that's what, maybe that's what you should do a show about, uh, matching up accountability partners and make them accountable for helping the other person until they get started. Yeah. Do you think that would work, Ed? Do you think that yeah, would work? I think so. Okay. Because I've had that thought before, and, and you remember back last summer, I was talking about having accountability teams, and I had a couple people kick that idea around with me, but I never could get anybody to grab the horns and, like, actually do it. <laughs> so I was like, how do I keep the accountability teams accountable to keep each other accountable? It was tough. Well, you know, I went through, I went through, a, I went through a program with a, with a guy named George Howard. He had a, a six-figure – it's called Six Figures to Something. What was it? What it was Six Figures to Something, but it was a it was a program, and it, it, on the second week, everybody that was in a group had to pick accountability partner. Now every every Saturday when it was time for the meeting, my accountability partner would call me and before the meeting about maybe an hour before the meeting and ask me what had I done, and you know we'd text each other in the week and then make sure that we stayed on on online. And if you didn't stay on. What happened? Well, they would, they would, they would bust your balls and tell you need to get it done. Okay. So we stayed, we stayed in tune with each other. I ended up graduating. I got a certificate from it. Six figures to something we call. Okay. Six I like steps it. to six figures. That's I what like it. it. Hey, Rick, what do you think about this idea, man? <clears throat> well, that's kind of a tough one. I mean, <clears throat> you know, you're dealing with people that that work and stuff like that. So I would probably throw it out there like in a poll, like you've done, I think before, like, you know, the, yeah. kind of a, a poll to the group to see, yeah. Hey, how many people would participate in this? Yeah. Um, it might be something good to start like after the holiday, yeah. kind of like break, breaking into the 2020, you know, oh, 2020 okay. and the new you, <clears throat> you know? Oh yeah. That's right. How good. That's the next year. Let's wait until after the holidays are over. Yeah, let's do that. See, uh, and what happened <laughs> when I was in the six steps to six figures, Justin, what we did was, when I was in the six steps to six figures, when we got our compatibility partners, what we did, we came up with a game plan, though. You had to you had to let them know what was your goal before yeah. that week was out or before the system was out, and you had to reach your goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I like it, man. And the Zoom here that we're on, we have breakout rooms available. And I, th so you remember I brought that out in the summertime too. And I was like, hey, right. I remember the breakout room. I was trying, I was toying around with these ideas that you're talking about, Ed. And I want, because I want to, I believe in what you're talking about. And I want to get it together where it functions well, where people are really getting something out of it and they're growing and helping one another. And, and also, too, you know, uh, <laughs> The thing I, the question I have is about Rick's scenario tonight that he presented is, mm -hmm. is it not, is it not possible that there's somebody already in our group that is learning to master the phone? That's maybe getting some, some traction on it. That would be yep. able maybe to even plug in with Rick and be there. Oh my God. You know, you know, I, would, why I, said, you know why I say, I think I'm getting analysis of paralysis because I listen to, we, we do role play with you. And then during the week I listen to, uh, uh, Claude Diamond's videos about the phone etiquette and all that all week long. That's all I'm listening to. Then I'm practicing, and then I'm listening to it, and I'm practicing it. Hey, man, they ain't getting me nowhere. <laughs> it didn't get me nowhere, he said. Uh, no, Justin, I was, I was actually going to reach out to you like in a private message and be like, hey, do you care if I throw this out to the group? I was actually – considering putting it out there saying, Hey, do we have anybody that, you know, would like to close some deals with me? Cause Man, that's really what it is. I mean, you, you, let me tell you who it is. You, <laughs> you, you can feel free to post it in the group, by the way. And in the VIP on the Facebook, I mean, that, uh, in that the, type of I'm scenario at. that, that I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That type of scenario would be almost more of 
like a JV partner ship in yeah. a sense, right? Because yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'm taking a lead to a certain, you know, position and then they're picking up where I'm leaving off and trying to basically yeah, like, close the deal. Right. I mean, that's kind of really what I'm looking for in a sense, right. Is somebody to take it and then I can continue doing what I like. I, <laughs> You know, I, after all this time, I have figured out that there is a part of the business that I really do enjoy much more than the other. What's that's that? For sure. What's that, Rick? I like going out and getting the business. You know, finding yeah. the ugly houses, finding the pretty houses, yeah. sorting them. Yeah. That's the you easy know, part, though. And seeing exactly where a person is at, having that conversation, breaking down their problem, oh, okay. being like, okay. Let's go A or B. I like taking it right to that point. And then after that, I kind of am like, uh, I, I mean, I, I can still do the other side, but I really just don't enjoy it. You know, I like yeah. the other yeah. better, more. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I just, I'm, I'm, more, <clears throat> I'm more excited about the approach and, uh, and the gather than, you know, yeah. the, <clears throat> the other side of it. To close the deal, the most important side is the side yeah. that I'm not fun at, that I'm not you know, just uh, enjoy. <laughs> so, you know, it's, okay. Hey, Rick, you know what's kind of funny? I enjoy the hardest part of it because I want to mm -hmm. try to tackle the heart of it. But then uh, I feel like I'm scared to. It ain't that mm -hmm. something, ain't it? But you know what, though, man? <clears throat> I mean, just, just I'm speaking from complete <clears throat> experience here, okay? I, I was like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was having leads and be like, damn, I got five leads here. And then... I would just push him off to the side of the desk and he'll go back, you know, about my business and think about that I should be calling them and not call them. And then after a while, they kind of fizzle away and then I get a couple others. Uh, the only really, the only way that I broke through that barrier was just to pick up the phone because the best thing that I've come to find out for myself is that, and it even happens today, when I'm talking to somebody, you know, we are human. We don't have the answer for everything. I just, I'm just, I am straight up and honest with people. If yeah. I don't know, I say, you know what? Uh, I actually don't know, but um, my associate, I think, does. So um, let me take some notes here, and I'll get back to you. <laughs> um, nobody's really ever hung up on me for saying that and being completely up on the table and honest with them. Um, people understand that, you know, we're all human. I, I don't know 100% about everything. I know a little bit about some things, and I just let people know that and – um, they seem to kind of respect the fact that I'm not just blowing smoke in their face, that I'm just telling them, yeah. I really don't know, but my associate does. And let me get back to you. I need you to just pick up the phone and just do it, man. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, pick up five leads, call them. Ed, hey. Ed mm -hmm. I'm now your accountability partner. How many phone calls are you going to make every day for the next week? And then next Wednesday, if it hasn't been done, and I'm gonna come How over many should house. I make? I'm gonna come over to your house and kidnap all your children. And <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, how many should I make a day? Five a day? Five a day, man. That's all I have. five conversations. I got, listen, five, I, got, five I got ten I got ten written down right now. Well you gotta you gotta do more than ten, man. That's two days. It, 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 and I'm not talking about dials, I'm talking about actual talking to somebody, not a mm -hmm. voicemail. <laughs> Five. Can you, you got, you, do you have an hour to two hours a day? Because that's what it's going to cost you if you yeah, have five yeah. real conversations. I, I, I ain't got nothing but time. I'm retired. I'll be sitting at the computer. That's why I say I got, I got analysis by paralysis because I'm sitting at the computer too long. Can you give me five a day before? I mean, not seven days a week. Take two days off in that stretch of the next seven days. And then next Wednesday night, uh, what about that? I mean, are, are, are you going to be able to report that you, you, you bang the phone every day or, or probably not? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it. You know what? Matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna try to do? What I'm gonna try to do is, on you, didn't I? You know, what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to record every time I talk. Yes. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you should, man. And that's what I told the lady, the other student I was talking about who was having a similar issue with uh sellers putting her off after the initial phone call. And uh I told her, you know, what you need to do is you need to record these. And I'll, I'll listen to some of them and you can listen to them too, but you'll, you'll really learn where you're messing up at. And Hey, have you ever been on a phone call with a seller and you said something 
And the moment it left your lips, it was like what they like on YouTube, those cringe videos. Like you just cringed. You knew you fucked up. Yeah. <clears throat> it's too late. You can't get it back. Those usually you remember. You know, matter of <laughs> fact, matter of fact, Justin, you need to record. Matter of fact, I talked to two people today. I talked to another guy and I was telling him um, he had a house for sale and uh so he he was an agent as well, but you know he wasn't an investor. He was an agent. So I started asking him about the leads that he threw away. And I say, well, if 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 since you're agent, I say, would you be willing to eat the leads that you don't that you can't help, which, and you ready to throw them away? Would you be willing to send them to me? And he asked me, well, what's in it for me? And when I told him, well, you know, you you generally get three three. You used to get three percent commission, right? Well, what if I gave you three percent commission? And after I said, I'm like, oh. Shit. I shouldn't have told him that. I should have let him told me what he wanted first. Right. Yeah, you should have said, "Hey, uh, what do you? Well, what's in it for you? That's a great question. What would you like to to have in it for you? I mean, what what do you got to have? Oh, and then act like he stabbed you. Oh gosh, <laughs> that much? I can't do it like that. That's how I do it. <laughs> well, he said he's gonna give me a call back because I told him. I, but after I said it, then I went back to him. I said, "Well, actually." I'm actually working with a partner of mine, and and he, I would have to run it by him. What would what would you what would you like what would you like to have from him? And uh, he said, "Well, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to call you back." Okay, why would you? Uh, why do you have to call me back? I don't understand. Well, he was at work. He was an agent. Oh, he's working. You're working right, right now. You can't get away from the phone or to get on the phone with me. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I get that. All right, so back to the point, though, Ed. Next Wednesday. Okay. I'm going to have it. Five a day. You asked for it, man. I asked for what I wanted. Hey, where are you at, Ed? What I'm state? in Chicago. Matter of fact, I'm trying to get my brother involved in it. <clears throat> but he'd be too busy. You know, he drive them trains for the railroad. So. Uh, another, uh, another thing, back to Rick's point the lady that you need to talk to by the way go ahead and post that on the facebook group uh, in the vip room as well whatever wherever but the lady you probably need to get connected with is right there in the southern california area and that is alefa oh yeah i've seen her before and she's she's pretty good on the phone man <clears throat> i mean she's one of my one-on-one -on -one students and she has gotten several deals over the phone in locations, not even, you know, some in her area and some out. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah. I have, uh, I have leads from a few different States cause I have, uh, some like, uh, some property finders, <clears throat> I guess you could say in a couple different States. So you she would be good. She would be good to connect up with. And like you were saying, it's kind of a JV partner situation, but, <clears throat> but here's my experience. Has been that uh, when you're doing outsourcing, you're trying to grow your business. You start out with virtual assistants, and then you you hire somebody that can get on. Yeah, I have blood. Uh, once they get on the phone, you realize that uh, that they're pretty good. They continue, you know, working on the phone, and uh, they get even better. And you do more business, and so you got to pay them a little more. You get more raise. Next thing you know, they're so good that they could do this without you. <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah, no, I'll uh, I'll so reach out to her. Yeah, and uh, and kind of see partner anyway. I'm sorry. I said you eventually end up with a JV partner anyway. Right, right. Well, especially if she enjoys that part, and uh, you know everything else. So yeah, I'll I'll reach out and see because again, I'm. I have to do something because, you know, again, the more I procrastinate on it, the more it's going to slip through the cracks. What's going on, R-Dub? What's, What's happening? up, man? How you doing? I, so I'm, uh, I'm just kind of popping in here, man. I just want to say what's up. What's up? Yeah, you look like you're getting ready for wintertime, brother. Is it cold over there in Ohio? Freezing my ass off. Fuck. Man. It's cold. Yeah. I've been following though. I'm checking you guys out. Yeah. Man, I've been I watching this watch. guy on YouTube. His name is called 
the show, the channel is called Meet Kevin, I think. Yeah, I, I've heard of him. Yeah, he's he's really been spending a lot of time talking about Ohio real estate investing and like yeah. in real shit areas, man. Is is he um is he the dude that like is he a like a realtor? Now he's a broker, but he's also an investor. So uh, yeah. most of his programs are about like buying rental properties and uh, picking up and, rental and properties against, sub subject to and stuff. Any against wholesaling? Didn't he get into it with like got sued by Grant Cardone or something because he kind of blasted him out somehow? I don't really know about that, man. I, I think I it is. I didn't eat breakfast with him. I just was <laughs> I was well, dude, watching hey. him over there in Ohio. Listen, I, I got a degree on YouTube University, man. So yeah, <laughs> you do, man. You do. I do. It's terrible. <laughs> You've been to a I'm few classes. I ain't. I ain't been in. <laughs> I'm all over. No, I'm just checking you guys out, man. What's just the hat, what's man? What's the C stand for? It's actually uh, our hometown school. It's Clyde. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually uh, playing for a state championship in football, man. Wow. This weekend. Wow, that's big time. So basketball, we've been having basketball the last four weeks. I coach basketball, and uh, we have no nobody there because the football players aren't there. So, wow, we're waiting on about twenty some kids, man. <laughs> so yeah, that's cool. Staying busy, but I'm still keeping on uh, on the real estate beat, man. I'm I'm still uh, quite obsessed with that. Yeah, but. You know, uh, you gotta you gotta have a life full of things. Yeah. Uh, you know, right? Yeah, I I coach two teams, but I I definitely keep up with uh, the VIP group. I still definitely appreciate you letting me in it. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> dog. Yeah, no no problem. It's a it's a business relationship, man. How you doing, Rick? <laughs> yeah. How you doing, Rick? Good man. Good. Good to see you. It's the first time I've really seen your face, so I. No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, no, it's okay. I'm just saying I I I heard you uh, through over the last couple months, but I've never seen you. So how you doing, man? Good, good. Nice to nice to meet you. Yeah. Face to face. Face to face. He, he looks like that guy on TV. Who is it? He looks like that guy on TV. Who who is it? Y'all know. Y'all know what I'm talking hmm. about. <clears throat> no idea. Rick. <laughs> Rick. Rick looks like an actor. I know, but who is he it? What's like, his name? I'm trying to pinpoint the. I'm trying to remember the name. I don't know. <laughs> he does. He looks you like someone. Hey, he is from L.A. We, shit, him, we, might hey, not, we might be talking. Him and my more. man Clint, man. These guys look like actors, bro. Yeah. Clint's got <laughs> yeah that's a good thing. That's a good thing, though. <laughs> so they're, yeah, pulling, they're, they're pulling a lot of chicks is what you're talking about. <laughs> What's up? What's up? <laughs> uh, Rick, are you married? Uh, no, no, I'm not. No. You're not married? <clears throat> no. Yeah, that's no. that California look. So he's probably pulling a lot of chicks then. That's what that <laughs> I got I actually got uh some family in um Manhattan Beach. So Oh nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Very cool. Yeah. Right, what well, you in Ohio? Yeah, I'm in Ohio, man. I'm in okay. northern Ohio. North central. So can't you tell? Doesn't it look cold where he's at? Yeah. I got a brother in Ohio, but he in he in he in Cleveland. He in I think it's Richmond, Ohio, something like that. Not Richmond. Richfield, huh? Richfield. No, he in a suburb of of, of Cleveland. Yeah, cool man. But I yeah, I've been up there a couple of times, but I don't remember. But I remember. Yeah. I, I used to come to me. You know, I guess when you get old, you start getting Alzheimer's. Yeah, hey, I get it, man. I get it. Yeah. Hey, it was chilly out here today. I had to throw on a jacket, man. It was like around 65. Get oh, out. man. Get out. That's a bummer, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to my brother in, in Las Vegas but the other night. He said it was like 35 down there. Whew. Wow. Uh, in Vegas? Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's, That's disappointing because you know nobody there brought clothes <clears throat> for it. <laughs> yeah, nobody, yeah nothing. nobody gives this shit there either, probably. <laughs> no, I know I wouldn't. I would. You know, uh, the problem with Vegas is, is it's too damn hot, man. Well, I got to yeah. get used to it because you know that's me and my wife' next day destination next year. Nice. 
Yeah, yeah. I know. You told me about that, man. That's exciting. You know, I think about buying another home in, in Clark County all the time. I really, oh, really? really do. But the thing is, like, cause, well, I like Vegas, but the, what I'm talking about being it's so hot is, you know how you, you drink a little bit? Like, I don't know if you guys are drinkers. I'm not a big drinker, but if I'm in Vegas, you, you drink till you get this little buzz. And you're like feeling good. And then you go outside, you're going to walk to another casino or maybe walk to lunch or something. And you sweat it all out before you get there. <laughs> I guess if you live there, it'd be a little different though. You know, I guess so, you, you're talking about tourists. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. So I tried to get, I tried to get a little lit for Britney Spears concert. It was at Planet Hollywood. And yeah. so I got a little lit. I walked down the strip, got in the show, fucking sober as hell. <laughs> you know, if you go to Vegas and you want to get lit and stay lit, go down to Fremont Street uh, in the evening. Yeah. yeah. I'm still trying to figure out the Britney Spears part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> it's Britney big. <bitch. laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I heard uh, – I heard Vegas. I heard they even got like a like a hangover bus, like you can go in and get an IV, like if you yeah. get really soft. Oh, yeah, they do. I'm like, bam, you're good. So never been there. A, they need like I had a, a boss that went there. She said, "Oh, she smells pot." Yeah, because it's it's a, it's it's a legal state for smoking. Yeah, it's yeah. Not Just like Illinois is gonna be. You know, they changed the laws for wholesaling in Illinois now. Start right. January the first. Yeah. <clears throat> first yep yep it's gonna be tough over there man well i don't you know i don't think it's gonna be that tough because you know what they say you gotta be a licensed or a licensed agent or a broker yeah how many licensed agents or brokers you know About might, as well just get a, <clears throat> might as well just get a license I, I i did a count one time in kansas city this was a couple years back y'all in kansas city which the population just to give you an idea is uh 2.25 million so two and a quarter million people in Kansas City, and there was four thousand three hundred and something. I think <laughs> forty three hundred realtors. I'm like, what the fuck? That's a lot. Yeah, it yeah. is. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've been to Kansas City a couple of times. Hey, um, <clears throat> I, we always love to just talk to each other too. I, I dig that. Um, but I, I did want to share a couple things that I think are important. Uh, one is that it's important to do yourself a favor when you're talking to these sellers, whether it's about a ugly house or it's a pretty house, um, go to prop stream or go to the County property tax records online and just check and make sure you're talking to the right person. Will mm -hmm. you do that for me? Because there's been a lot of scams lately guys. And, uh, I don't want to see any of our people get took by it. But it's just really that simple. Just verify who you're talking to before you get real deep with them. I mean, you don't have to do that before you call them. But if you're going to start sending paper <clears throat> over and all that, just do a quick look. That's all. Because if, if it says uh, the owner's name on uh, the county property tax records is Jerry Rowland, but you're, t but you're talking to a Lamont Friedman, okay, something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it. Seems like common sense, but there are some real shady characters out there, and and that's with uh, calling homeowners. Now the other this also comes into play with if you're a co wholesaler and you're talking to other wholesalers about their deals and you have buyers or what have you. Uh, re remember the first step in co wholesaling is to verify that they actually have that property under contract. How would you do I that? Ask, say what? How would you do that? I, I ask, ask him to let you see it. Hey, can you send me a copy of that? I'm going to need it to verify that, it, you know, address and all that stuff too. Plus this is technically what the buyer's buying. Uh, you're yeah. signing this document. They're buying this document. How can you represent a document that you can't even see? Okay, so um, if the JV partner is not willing to share, then he's not a very good partner, or even worse, he's a scam artist. Okay, right. I'll give you a real good example. Last week we had, and I'm I'm bringing this up because it's happened two or three times in like a week, and maybe that's because of Christmas coming up. 
but I had another student say that they were talking to a potential JV partner and they were going to bring in their buyer and they were going to put a deal together. And he said, uh, but the JV partner won't send me the contract. I said, run. He said, well, well, what if he's, what if he's for real? I said, ask him the following question and read it verbatim. I'll type it out for you. Sounds great. I would love to send you my buyer and put this deal together and we could both make some money. However, I'm going to have to share this contract with the buyer because they are going to be assuming it in the transaction and we can't fly blind. Is this a problem? Do you have it under contract or are you wasting my time? Word for word. And if they are wasting your time, then just walk away. You know, there's a lot of people that are claiming to be wholesalers and have co-wholesale deals. And, and they, they don't even have a deal under contract. They don't even have it under contract. So right. you need to either one, verify that somebody's name is on the property deed at the property county tax assessor's <clears throat> website, or you need to see that contract for sure if it's co sale. Both, probably, <laughs> in that case. So you don't get took. Yeah. And, you know, wouldn't it be humiliating if you were like, hey, Mr. Buyer, wonderful. Let me show you this deal like a scam artist brought me, but I didn't know how to check to verify. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. <laughs> that's embarrassing. I would imagine there's got to be a lot of that going on just because it seems like, man, like everybody's yeah, it like in the last year, everybody and their mama's in the wholesaling, man. Yeah. Tons and tons of it going on out there, y'all. Be careful. It's not anything to be scared of. Just just take the time to go look, you know, to see if you're talking to the right person. And uh, then, then you don't have to be worried about it. I, I had another student tell me this week, they were like, um, one, of the, uh, one of the homeowners is in Africa. Um, okay, well, that's possible, all right? But... Um, he's wanting money right away and sh you know, whatever. Okay. You know, doesn't that just feel like a scam? I yeah. mean, yeah, golly, right. It does. So, you know, use your judgment guys, you know, and, and stay safe, play safe out there. Right. Play safe. Hey, Justin. Yeah. I got to get going, but I just want to pop on and say what's up to you guys. Yeah, me too, man. Um, We've been here a bit. So let's all yeah. catch up if you, unless anybody's got something. I'm sorry to cut you off. What were you saying, man? No, it's cool. I just wanted to say uh, what's up and, uh, you know, uh, I'm definitely supporting everybody. I'll get in a game eventually here, but, you know, I got a lot of a lot of things happening. So, yeah, we'll it's, a, it's, it a, it's a lot of deals out there in Ohio, I heard. Uh, you know what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're all over. I know. Yeah. That's well, what I was trying time. to say with that video uh, with the other guy, the other the guy that uh, is the the anti wholesaler, the the wholesaler. Uh... Me, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Justin, do you with the new law that's coming up in Illinois? Do you know if it's got anything to do with lease options, subject tools, and stuff like that, or is it just wholesaling? Man, my understanding of it is, is that they have really done a doozy over there in the state of Illinois. See, now, if you wanted to know how to do lease options in Texas, I could probably point you in the right direction. That's a tough state to do lease options in, everyone says. It's not really, but um, in the state of Illinois, they've really done a doozy on that legislation, and they've made it where they've written the law. This is my understanding of it, and I'm not an attorney, but they've written it where you can't market a property. It's more, the wording is more about the marketing of the property or the property contract. Uh, rather than the assignment of a contract or doing a lease with an option or some of the things that come up in Texas, for example, that's not really the issue in Illinois. It's more like marketing the property. So the realtor community and the brokers, they want full exclusivity on the ability to market properties. So it doesn't matter if you're buying it, selling it, assigning it, wholesaling it, rent to owning it. Yeah, but how can they do it? If I got a piece of property that I own free and clear, I can sell it whatever way I want it, right? Well, yeah, if your name's on the deed. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so you know, if, if I deal with cash buyers that, that strictly own their property, they should be able to do what they want with it. 
They should yeah. be able to do exactly what they want with it. You're absolutely right. The problem heard- is they can, but they're homeowners. The problem is, is when you're a wholesaler coming in, it's hard to not market the property or the property contract. How are you going to do business if you can't market? See, that's a tough yeah. thing. So my solution is, according to the law, you can do one a year. Yeah, they, they even got it. They've even got it squirreled away where you can't do it. Like you can do one in your own name and then you could open an LLC and do another one and then open another LLC and do a third one. No, they, they got it written where you can't do that either. So um, in, in the state of Illinois, do your first deal and then go get a license or go hire a realtor that'll work. Yeah. That's really the, yeah, I, just, I mean, I'm sorry that there's not better news, but that's all I, I that's my understanding of the law in Illinois. Well, I guess yeah, it's still young, so a lot of people don't really know. Um, I've heard. It's true. I've just read in like some threads and things where people are like, "I'm just getting my license." Yeah, I mean, if that's I mean, where you're gonna deal. Yeah. Yeah, but, it, it ain't that big of a thing to get a license anyway. It'll take a little bit of time out of your life, but not much, and not much money either. I guess one thing about it is you can always market your property no matter where you're at. And well, not if you're going to get a license, it. you better get them now. See, because, you know, Illinois is a mob town. And if they know you need licenses, guess what's going to happen? They're going to start raising the fees on getting licensed. Yeah. They want to make more money. Better get it now, then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> so they have you to know better going starting school, getting into school now where the price is already down. I think that's what right. I'm – well, I'm going to be in, in, in Nevada, so – but I still may want to buy property in Illinois. Who knows? I think it's going to end up going nationwide, to be honest with you. I really do. Oh, it was just well, a start. Just, they start yeah. here and it's going to trickle down. You guys want the bleak and the bad news? I'll give it to you. <laughs> Might as well, bro. <laughs> nice. My, my, Happy holidays. <laughs> yeah. Happy, Merry fucking Christmas here. Hey, <laughs> Yeah, we're all going to be out of business in about 10 years. I mean, in, in the wholesale <clears throat> game, probably, it, not probably lease options, but as far as picking up properties and assigning them over. And it's not because it's going to become illegal. Because this shit has been legal for hundreds of years, y'all. Okay? This is, mm-hmm. a, this is an old empirical, uh, what do they call it, with, with the queen and all that? Uh, it's, a, it's that system. And it's been passed down hundreds of years ago. We still use it today. The Canadians use something very similar. You know, we all, it's all based on that parliamentary type shit. Okay. So anyway, it's legal. It will remain legal, but they will pass legislation eventually in every state that requires title company transactions that the, you know, at a title company, they have title insurance. That's what a title company does. They sell title insurance. Well, they will have legislation in place where the title insurance companies will not be able to insure or they'll not be willing. They either can't or they won't be willing to one of the two. And in some cases it's that way now where they won't be willing to insure a deal if there's an assignment in it. Yeah. Okay. And which means that the seller and the buyer can't do this transaction with guarantees and so bye-bye wholesaler it's it's really a it's a mafia it's a play like a, it's like the damn mafia man i believe it, it. really is i i think that's why uh you know i think we're all in the right place is because you're just learning different creative strat, uh, strategies you know from justin like with the lease option to be honest for me what pushed me to lease option and learning that was ohio was pretty strict where you couldn't assign uh, contracts in Ohio. You'd actually have to double close it. That Jeff Watson, I don't know if anyone's ever seen his videos. He's an attorney in Ohio. Mm-hmm. And um, he had a video with the real estate agency or, or commission in Ohio. So, you know, honestly, that's why I've been tiptoeing for, for years. And I'm just getting to the point where it's like, dude, come on. So I got my own shit happening. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta work around it, and I think that's why the this real estate wholesalers club. I mean, shit. In five years, if I really got off my ass, I mean, I could not even worry about that stuff. I'd be pretty established. 
I, I know. I actually think you know it's it's you know whenever somebody make up something, it's only gonna take time. Somebody gonna figure out a way around it. It's always somebody figure out a way of getting around. Yeah. Guys, you know that's absolutely the truth. There's always a way around, and there's a way to do it. Uh, but I disagree with you, Ryan. On the five years, I think it's two. You know, you're always fucking right, dude. <laughs> God. Two years. You're always right, bro. If Dang. you can just give me two fucking years of dedicated focus, man. Two years. That's why I follow you. <laughs> I'm going to give you a dedicated focus. Give you a hug right here. I love you. Come here, bro. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come yeah, on. I'm gonna give you a. I'm gonna give you a two years of dedicated focus. Hey, 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 hey Justin. Whatever happened to uh, um? Oh boy, the one that wore the t-shirt from you. Um, Claude. Yeah, Claude. Couldn't tell you. Oh, you couldn't tell me. Hey, uh, no. I seen uh, Claude posting please. some deals. Posting. I don't deals? know. If he did, I don't know if he did them, but he was posting some like apartment deals shit. Yeah. I don't know what he's up to, man. It was It's strange. He plugged in. I felt like we really opened our arms to him and uh, hugged him up and loved him up and everything. And uh, and then he just sent me. And he just disappeared, right? Because he was one of the – I've seen, I seen y'all talking. I'm like, man, Claude is really into it. Yeah, he sent me a message one day. He said, you know, the wholesalers club is not really for me. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm kind of a loner and blah, blah. And that was the last time I ever heard from him. So I really it was like it was like a fucking John Deere letter, guys. Really? Yeah. Or Good did guy, I say man. a John Deere letter? A Deere John. <laughs> Damn farmer. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it because I was I was on the wholesaler club website and I seen on his video. You had his video on your site. <laughs> That's a way. Yeah. <laughs> Kansas City. Hey fellas, I gotta go. I gotta go. Hey, love you guys. Later, our dub. Hey, why don't y'all uh, why don't y'all go get some dinner, everybody? Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go too. Thanks, Ryan. Anybody got any, any, anybody got anything else we can talk about? Or, or? Uh, I got my I got my first five tomorrow, dude. You better go get it. <laughs> I got my first five tomorrow. <laughs> See you. All right, man. See y'all later. With, you sleep with the fishes. Hey, you don't take the threats. <laughs> yeah, we're men. We don't have to do that. But <laughs> <laughs> oh. nice. All right. Love you guys. Y'all have a great night. Rick, hey. see you later, man. All right, yeah, good, chat, good chatting with you guys, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's good we'll chatting with you, Rick. Soon. Yes, sir. Right, Thanks, Justin. Justin. Bye, I'll speak Ryan. with you hey, after Kelly. I make my final calls. Kelly, I love you, man. Hey, it's good to see you. Hey, love hey, me too, hey, brother. I, I lost internet for like 50 miles. I've been driving, so I didn't mean to bug out on you. <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. Hey, hey, hey Kelly, you how you doing? Home? What's that? Are you driving back home? Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Be safe, dude. All right. Appreciate it, man. Good to see all you guys. Yep. All right, Kelly. Nice seeing you, man. All right. Bye-bye. You too, man. Take care.